Hey guys, I know that I look kind of oily right now and it's because I have been sweating while practicing piccolo for an hour straight. Yeah, it's been a time. The most frequently asked question I get that trumps every other question is how do you prepare for music school? I did make a video before about how I did it, but I don't recommend that you do it the way I did. Now I am also helping a few students prepare for their auditions and I've helped a few other people on like Discord and stuff. You know who you are, hello. I could feel that there is a theme going on currently so might as well talk about it. The first thing that you have to remember when you are auditioning for music school is that it is school. It's not the same as if you were to apply for like an orchestral position. It's not work, it's an education. However, on the flip side, you do have to meet a certain threshold for getting into music school because the professors in music school are there to raise you to the level of a professional. They're not there to teach you the basics. So you should know the basics beforehand. What are the basics? I think that's the big question a lot of people have. The basics include scales, all major, all minor. I would go as far as to say that you need to learn not just your harmonic minor, which is what most people learn, but you have to learn with complete command of the instrument, your natural minor and your melodic minor scales, at least two octave. In university is where you normally learn your scales in the full range of your instrument. So you start from the tonic, the lowest root note of the scale that you can play on the flute. You play all the way up within the scale to the highest note that, that you can play. Then you come all the way down to the lowest note you can play in that scale, which is like way past the tonic. Then you come back up to the tonic. If you want to get a head start, I would encourage you to to learn all of your major and three different minor scales full range before you go into music school. You also need to have had some form of basic tone development. What I recommend for that and what a lot of people use is the first two pages of Trevor Wide's tone book. So if you're working out of the, uh, the white book, where is it? It's here. I was just teaching out of it today. It's this guy here. Look out of page six and seven. You can get some basic tone development going there. Typically you do need to have a teacher kind of guide you through it because you need to have a professional set of ears picking up on your blind spots. That doesn't mean that you can't develop tone very well on your own too, but you will have blind spots that you will not catch until a professional catches it for you. I do notice that you need to have gone through kind of hardcore tone development at least once in your life before going to music school. Music school is kind of the second or third round of it. They go hard in dissecting your sound. You do need to be exposed to the basic etudes, things like the Anderson etudes. It's generally expected that by the time you've reached music school, you would have learned at least a couple opuses of Anderson etudes. So some really common ones are like opus 15, opus 33. It's kind of expected that you learned all of them. So it's not like pick and choose a few from this opus, a few from that opus. You would have had to gone through the entire book. You can study it on your own too, but again, you do need a private teacher to catch some of your blind spots. I have noticed that nowadays, you should be at the very least introduced to some orchestral excerpts. The orchestral excerpt book that is used in North America is the Jeannie Backstresser one. This one. Schools will make copies out of this book for their audition material. It, like it's straight out of this book. You won't have had to like study all of these because you will go through these in music school. But if you are already introduced to them a bit, it really helps it not be so much of a shock when you go into music school and you have to study orchestral excerpts. Some good ones to study would be like the Polonaise and Badinery by uh, Bach's uh, Orchestral Suite number no. two in B minor. Apologies if I said those all those words in a horrific American accent. I know, but that's how we say it. <laughs> Another one would be the minuet um, from the Lazar... Lar... Lar... I've never actually tried to say this out loud, by the way. Lar... Lar... 
Larlazin. Sweet, number two. You know, it's the one that goes I probably sang it in the wrong key entirely. It's by Bizet. Minuet and Dance of the Blessed Spirits by uh, Gluck. That's also a really, really good one to learn. Get yourself acquainted. I think that is the word I'm looking for. Acquainted with orchestral excerpts and you'll be good to go. Now, repertoire. You would think that you don't need to learn things like concerti and stuff like that until you get into music school. However, probably the most common audition piece is either the Mozart Concerto in D or the Mozart Concerto in G. I learned the Mozart in D first. I learned the Mozart in G, I think, while I was in music school. At the very least, before music school, you should have learned at least one of them. I would go as far as to just learn both. Why not? Because every single flutist, sometime in your career, you have to learn the Mozart Concerti, regardless of the fact that Mozart hated the flute and that he plagiarized his own oboe concerto in C, transposed it and called it the concerto in D for the flute. Regardless of the fact that Mozart is probably rolling in his grave, that these two pieces are like the top two audition material for the flute, you have to learn them. That's just kind of the part of the life as the flutist. Really study the heck out of at least one of them. Also, by the time you get into music school, you would have had to, you would have had to have been, am I, what is grammar? Exposed to show pieces. The most famous of them all is the Chaminade Concertino. If you're going to study a show piece, that should be the first one. It is like the fur release of the flute world. You have to study that one. Even if you're like me and you don't really like romantic music, at least I didn't used to like romantic music, I love it a lot more now. Cause once I got the history of it and stuff like that, then I was like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. But romantic music doesn't actually jive with me naturally. Baroque music does. Baroque and very weird modern music. My absolute favorite show piece is the Hungarian pastoral fantasy by Albert Franz Doppler. <sighs> I love that one. You want to get used to ripping up scales and stuff like that, like with no problem. You're gonna be doing a lot of that in music school. Not just in your solo work, you're gonna be doing a lot of it in ensembles, band, orchestra, especially band. Cause band has all the really like modern music and modern music tends to really test the limits of your instrument. Better get used to ripping up scales, down scales, up arpeggios, down arpeggios, which yeah, actually I did leave that out in your technique. You should know all of your arpeggios too, major and minor. Also throw in some sevenths while you're at it. Dominant sevenths would be a good one to start with before you head into music school. In music school is when you're start starting to learn things like diminished sevenths, scales and fourths, not just in thirds. Maybe scales and thirds would be a good one to do before you get into music school as well. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Anyone can get into music school, just like how anyone can cook. However, there is a threshold that you have to meet and that's, that's what I'm talking about in this video. You do have to have kind of gone through mini music school before you go to music school. So you do need to basically have a certain level of musical maturity. The only way to really get that is by having a private teacher. Now, I know what you guys are thinking right now. It's like, oh my gosh, but what if I can't really afford a private teacher? There are ways around it. I have noticed that, especially if you are a go-getter, I would try to get lessons with a really good professional in your area at least once a month. Basically what you're asking for is like crash courses. That way, even if the lessons are pretty expensive, you can kind of drag out the expenses for it over several months. So instead of going for like a one hour lesson every week, going for even just a one hour lesson once a month with a really good teacher, you're gonna go leaps and bounds. I have actually a few students who only study with me once a month. It's great. I can just basically assign them a whole bunch of things to practice. I assign practice methods for certain things. As soon as I can hear that they like get what I'm talking about, then we move on to the next thing. It's only if I'm trying to figure out why something's not working, then we'll dwell on it for a little bit until I figure it out. It doesn't have to be once a week. What you just need is you need that professional set of eyes and that professional set of ears to teach you things you have not been exposed to and to catch your blind spots. My students who are only once a month have just absolutely flourished. I actually have a friend who got into music school and he only started the flute when he was 
in like his junior year of high school. So that's year 11 for those of you who are unfamiliar with the kind of American terms. If I'm not incorrect, I believe he did have a teacher kind of guiding him through it. It is absolutely possible. You can totally do it. Also keep in mind, you don't have to go to that one school that you think you should go to. I would encourage you guys to audition around. And also, don't be afraid of auditioning to like a smaller school. There are a lot of schools out there that are smaller, but they have fantastic professors. If there's one thing I know about the music world is that there's basically not enough schools for the amount of amazing teachers that there are out there and amazing performers there are out there to be professors and lecturers. Don't be afraid to go looking around a little bit more. Just because you don't go to the biggest school does not mean you're a loser. I didn't go to a very big school for my master's. Never mind the fact that I wasn't actually taking my degree as seriously as I should have. I was preoccupied with other things in my life and I came out fine. I want you guys to not be caught up in the trap of thinking that you only have one school to go to and you have only one professor to study under. No, there are many, many schools out there. There are many, many professors out there. You just need to find the one that fits you the best. So not only is the music school auditioning you, in a way, you're also auditioning the music school. The audition itself is very revealing as to how you fit into that school. If something doesn't quite feel right and something feels a little off and you don't really connect with them, that may actually be a sign that that music school is not really for you. Whoever is watching this, you're probably interested in auditioning for music school. At the very least, please know that this random internet person believes in you. You can do it. I would just encourage you to take some of the advice that I've given you in this video. Make sure you meet the threshold before you audition into music school because it can be really, really disappointing if you don't. Once you've met the threshold and then you go auditioning around, then what you're doing is you're just trying to figure out which school fits you the best. I believe that is it for today. I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope it was interesting. I tried to put a different spin on the whole auditioning for music school thing. So let me know if that worked. If you like this video make sure you give me a big thumbs up hit subscribe for new videos every saturday but you know the subscribe button is totally broken so please also punch that bell icon to be notified of when i post you can find me on my social media which you will find down below my last video is playing right here which i will put a link to up here for you guys i also hang out on patreon every other week so if you want to hang out with me i have a link down below for that as well thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week bye